so starting the day with the fundus fluorescein angiography the role in current era of oct and octa now what whenever the technology is upgraded it never means that the past technology doesn't have its own use we should always take whatever good are there and it is another uh, what i should say the uh, tool in our armamentarium so why not ffa so to in short it these are the points why we wanted to think above ffa one invasive previously we need to have if the pro you go according to protocol protocol there has to be a nsetis so and it's an invasive people had anaphylaxis so invasive is a one big thing which it cannot be performed in an uh, outpatient uh, like in a heavy opd second die related complications as we all know cannot be repeated in quick succession when i was learning uh, you know my doing my retina fellowship and suppose if you hadn't taken a photograph in an early phase the thing is gone because they cannot put in dye in second time that day you have to call him once again so you cannot repeat it in quick succession doesn't give a cross sectional details of the retina now the oct was the only tool well in histo in via vivo uh, pathological sections you can actually see the of the retina why the ffa is a two dimensional picture in the third dimension is not included which is there in oct and you need another separate dye another filters for seeing choroidal circulation but why i am going to talk it is still there to stay the leakage is better detected this terminology of leakage is reserved for ffa there is nothing like leakage on oct so the leakage what we know in diabetics in nv is there only on angio works better in media is because the though the recent octas which are there in swept source octs are working on 1084 nanometer which have a better penetration but still still i still see that in place in cases of a vitreous hemorrhage or in cases of media haze still we get a better picture or better idea of uh, perfusion in uh, oct in ffa as compared to octa it is a dynamic test so there are two arms to it one is time and another is the flow of dye while the oct is actually a seeing if i give a uh, simile so doing an ffa is seeing the movie in full from start to the end while oct is seeing it in snaps now you stitch together the snaps you can probably know the whole picture but in one go seeing how the actually flowing is can be only done with angio <coughs> it can be used in pediatric population too oral and fluorescein angiography with uh, it, it is being done in uh, cases of uh, ropes uh, with red cam so octa and uh, oct is difficult though the there are uh, modifications where the you, know, you can get uh, oct mounted on uh, 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 the microscope but then in pediatric population it is possible to do in current scenario it is less expensive technology now because we are being the diabetic capital <coughs> of the world the low cost healthcare delivery system is the time what what we require just now octa is a still a machine which is not for the masses oct though the things have reduced but still if the amount of money you are putting in and angiography is much it, in one third or one fourth of the price you would be able to diagnose most of the things on uh, ffa so now i would just show you the cases that i personally feel that even with wide angle octa the normal angiography being done by not so expensive like i'll show you two sets of picture one is by So what we call Zeiss or Topcon were good angiography machines. These are Indian upgraded machines, and still you can diagnose most of the pathologies. So if you see the fundus photograph, right eye there is a media haze. There is probably uh, vitreous hemorrhage. Left eye you can see microaneurysm and hard exudates. The quality of photographs cannot be compared. I totally agree. But the thing changes as you see in angio. 
I don't rate these Anjo any way inferior because you can get most of the things you want to know on left eye. You can see the leakage there, early phases and late phases and right eye and even in presence of vitreous hemorrhage. You can actually see that it is leaking from the superior temporal arcade and along with the prolif at the disc. Another picture of diabetic retinopathy. These are pictures not from a Zeiss machine. So you can see that there is a, a, a transmission defect, the, the block fluorescence due to hemorrhage here. And these are the NVs. You can very easily see that it is happening at the junction of perfused and non perfused retina. And you can beautifully see the florid NVs which are there. This is a case where a red free photographs and a fundus photographs, you can make out there is a circular here, probably a CSR. And on serial frames, early and then going about it, you can see there is a definite leakage there. So this thing you cannot get in OCT. OCT you, can, you cannot pinpoint leakage, though you, now you have a markers which have shown that more than 90%, they do correspond. But you cannot go and laser just based on OCT. In, in cases of choroiditis, how to see the activity of choroiditis? Octa doesn't define it. There are different markers where a retinal edema can be detected, which might be an indicator, but actually the disc is leakage or not. So this is a coincidence stage. It, it's a, an early it's staining around the borders. And this is not an active case. Now, this is the case for neuro-ophthalmologists. You can see the disc is vaccine appearance. The margins are blurred. And in angio, in right eye, you can actually see there is leakage in successive frames. The hot disc, as we call it, the disc leakage cannot be, put, cannot be caught by Octa or OCTA. Though you can get the disc edema. But whether that disc edema is actually, if you want to get a hint in inflammatory or not, it is still active or not, you want to start steroids or not, an angio is must. Now, this is a very ideal thing. This is a patient of choroiditis who you can see the old scars there and then a hyperemic disc. As soon as you are still not very sure that yes, the media is hazy, he might be having some activity. But as soon as you do an angiogram, you can see a leaking disc with disc edema, with uh, macular edema. So this is an active stage. We do need to give steroids. Now these are the photographs from a Zeiss machine, just outlining the ideal cases of a CNVM. That probably these things can be caught also by OCT or OCTA. This and even better by OCTA in, in terms of depth. But just to see the uh, complex, CNVM complex, clearly demarcating there and leakage. So what part of a disease is actually active? But you can also see what is actually the diseased RPE. So the visual prognosis will actually depend not only on this part, but also in this part. Because this is going to deteriorate in the course of the disease, even after anti -vegifs. This is the other eye of the same patient. Now this is a very interesting case. Actually, I have I didn't have the few ICG photographs of this patient because uh, we didn't had ICG at that time, and uh, those were with Shobit sir uh, helped us in diagnosing the patient. So if we go back in time a little bit, this was the first time the patient presented to us in 2017. The left eye was already gone because there was a huge disciform scar, and they are only seeing eyes teacher by profession, is there was a serious hemorrhage along with uh, exudation. So, so much amount of blood, always PCV is in mind. We didn't have an ICG, we sent it over, over to Shobhis sir's place. And beautiful photographs of ICG. We can pinpoint the patient, the polyps. This was the OCT at that time. We just lasered this patient. And you can see the fluid disappear, no anti -vegis. And it disappeared, patient went back to coincident stage, didn't come back to me in three years. Post three years, he again presented to me that I am having some amount of loss of vision. And this was the picture. So this was the scar. 
which was there, which had evolved over the time. And I can see these new hemorrhages cropping up here. On OCT, there wasn't much of, much of SRF there. But then this hemorrhage is a sign that, you know, that again, disease has become active in the area of BBN. This is an angio. It doesn't give a lot of clue. You, you can see the staining of the old scar. There is scar as they're blocking the fluorescence. So it doesn't give much of a clue. But this shows the utility of ICG in actually defining the possible BVN and the area possibly here, which on the lake there, there is a staining in this one and this two. So these two areas is where we are actually lasered him and it, it has been now more than six to eight months he has not come back to me. So no news is a good news, that's what I'm thinking. So this, the area of demarcating pollen, which might be active, catching up of BVN can be done only by ICG. Now the OCT biomarkers in Opta are evolving, but still for lasering it, for the pinpointing it, for treating it, we still rely on, IC, on FFA and ICG. So I want to just rest my case in saying that though it is an old technology, but it's not an obsolete technology. Thank you.